What's up divas and divos? It's your girl April so you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday and of course it's Tuesday but you know what I'm saying it is Real Talk Wednesday. Let me just make sure my volume is on because I'll never forget the one time I did Real Talk and I think I was like 30 minutes in you know what I'm saying and I then I realized bitch the volume is not on. So and I have done that quite a few times. So before we even get started Got a new kind of like background going on here for you guys. I'm trying to change it up. Not all the time, but you know what I'm saying, when I feel like it. Sometimes I get tired of seeing my own background while I'm editing my videos. You know, I'm trying to make it look a little bit different, which is cool. You know, we got to change it up a little bit. Funk the fire. Spunk it up. Um, but definitely, yes, um, I'm just trying to change it up. Also, if guys, you ain't got any... In case you guys have noticed, my eyes are like a grayish color today. I did get some contacts from this company. Um, they sent me these sky gray ones um, and these hazelnut ones that are really light, but they're not as light as these in my eyes because I think it has to do with my skin complexion. So I did give those to my daughter, Tati. She's, you know, she's dark, she's darker than me, and they look really, really light in her eyes. But I think the name of the company is called, you know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all already know that I will pronounce somebody's name, um, like mispronounce it. I will chop it the fuck up. So I'm thinking, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking this is called Bulonguis, Bulonguis, Bulonguis. Boy, boo long uh, You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But um, they do have some nice contacts, and I will have the video up soon. Accentuate your eyes with lenses. They do have some nice ones. They're located in Atlanta, Georgia. And I like these. Like, it gives me, like, that totally different look. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got on my favorite blonde wig and shit. Now, first of all, let me tell y'all about this wig, because this is going to be the last time that I tell y'all about this wig. Um, I made this wig in November of last year, okay? November of last year. So the wig is damn near almost a year old, okay? And I made it. The highlights in it, I made it. The hair came to me in like a color number 27, I think. And so did the closure. There was no dark roots on it. It was just all one solid color of a 27. So I went ahead and I got some box dye. Um, I got like a reddish brown. And I got a dark brown for the roots. And that's how I made it. There is a video on YouTube that shows how I made it. But the crazy part about this wig is I don't really wear it that much because I'll be just trying to hold on to the shit. Like, you know, I have another wig that was my favorite and it still is. It's not this color, but it's very almost similar to this almost similar to this um and i wore the hell out of that wig so much that the elastic in the dome cap had to be sewed in probably like five times i had to take that damn cap in so i'm trying to like kind of like save save the wig not save it but you know what i'm saying i don't want to wear it as much because i really want this to last me for I'm going to say a lifetime, okay? Yes, bitches, I want this shit to last me a lifetime. And when I say I want it to last me a lifetime, meaning I don't want to have to unsew it and put on another cap because then it just don't look the same no more. So I'm really trying to keep it as it is. So that's why I don't really wear it a lot. Plus, I don't really go too many different places. But sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't, meaning sometimes I wear the blonde and sometimes I won't wear the blonde. It all depends on the mood that I'm in, you know what I'm saying? It all depends. And I think it all depends on how I look as an individual, like am I overweight or what, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But the funny thing about this wig is every time I wear it, I got somebody either emailing me or if I have a picture on Instagram, um, sending me contacts. Like I had somebody last week send me three contacts, the same person. Um, do you have a contact so I can meet up with you so I can buy that wig? Like, girl, nobody even said it was for sale. But, so I guess a lot of people like this wig. I'm not really sure why. Um, it is a very pretty wig. Um, it's loose wavy hair, but, you know, I curled it like this. Um, in the very initial video, you'll see that it is loose wavy um, the way I did it. But the curls have kind of, like, dropped over time because they're just from sitting. But, um... When I first did the wig, I did curl it loose wavy, you know what I'm saying? Because it is a loose wavy. So I had to put a little bit more curls into it because of all the shit that I had to do, meaning the dye and the... It just was a lot. 
so it kind of like lost some of its weight but it the waves just kind of like fell out that I put in it so this is how it ended up looking but I mean like I do I love the wig it's one of my favorites um, the funny thing about it also is when I first initially did the closure as you guys see it was not this dark brown I used like a medium reddish brown it didn't really go at all it, it didn't come out as good as I wanted to meaning it just didn't blend well with my hair so I had to redarken the actual um, closure I had to redarken the roots of the closure but the closure came just one solid color um, and I just you know this is what I did to it but I actually love it the color has faded um, because as you see the brown it was a little bit more redder um, so it has faded over time just from a few washes because it's a it's a box dye um, and this is um, this is the lightest it's going to get it's not going to fade anymore but I love it yeah I, I do have a couple of faves that I, I I do like I actually do like so anyway let me tell you guys before we even get to this real talk this is not my motherfucking week let me tell y'all something so um, I had my Galaxy 7 phone for like a year a little bit over a year and I feel like this I, I I don't really like to buy new phones because they're not fucking cheap. They're the motherfuckers is not cheap. So I try to hold on to something for as long as I can, especially because if I take good care of it, then there's no reason why it shouldn't work. So last Monday, it was like it started at two o'clock in the morning. I'm not even sure if I told you guys this last week, but two o'clock in the morning, why did this fucking phone just keep restarting this stuff? It restarted itself from like two something in the morning to like seven forty seven in the morning. All day fucking long. All night, all morning, whatever. And it's been doing this for the past week now week and a half now so they said it needed a new battery I got it restored first of all I took it back to the store and my phone um, and I had the phone company factory restore it so you know they took all my shit off the phone and I didn't even want that to go down but I let them take all the shit off the phone because they said it was a software update and everybody's phone was doing that. I'm okay, cool. If that's gonna fix the problem, then great because this phone is keeping me up at night. It keeps restoring, restarting itself like every five fucking minutes. And I really need the phone to work because it got my alarm on there. Well, anyway, that shit did not work. So yeah, it did not work. And I took it to this place out here in Arizona called You Fix We Break. It's like this um, company that it's not one of them little rinky dick mom and pop places. It's really not. It's a really technical electronic place where they fix your phone. They said it needed a battery. And this is what I read and looked up as well. Well, I gave them $100 for the battery because, you know, you can't pop the top off. You can't pop the backs off of these galaxies. You have to have somebody do it for you. You can't just pop the top off and change the battery. It doesn't work like that anymore. So that's why it cost me $100. Please tell me why. That motherfucker done turned off so many goddamn times since yesterday that I'm about to have a fit. So I had to bring it back and let them look at it. And basically they're like, well, it might be the phone. It's probably the phone if it's not the battery. Sucky thing is the people that, um, the company that I deal with, did they not put my insurance on my Galaxy? They had it on the phone that I originally had. I paid for it for five months for a phone. I paid five months for insurance on a phone that I didn't even have thinking that I was paying insurance for this Galaxy. No. And um, whose fault is that? Theirs. Okay, because they had to replace my phone. And now it doesn't have warranty. So basically April is ass the fuck out. And I, you know what, I love a good phone, but I'm not about to spend 700 to 800 dollars on another phone. I'm not going to do that. I am going to just buy a cheaper phone. I didn't even spend $750 for the Galaxy when it first came out. The phone company gave it to me because I had a contract or I had insurance and I had a contract and I kept that same phone for two years and finally they was like, we're just going to give you a new one. So I paid $75 versus $750. Um, I don't think these motherfuckers is going to give me a new phone for $75 because they said you don't have no insurance and that's nobody's fault for Charles. And now y'all not even going to give me a new phone because the warranties ran out and that's nobody's fault for Charles. So, a bitch is real fucking mad and shady and salty right now. Then, on top of that, y'all know last week how I showed y'all the fucking leggings that I absolutely love from Target. You know, with the holes in the knees, the ripped out knees and shit, right? So, I went out and got another pair, right? Let me tell you something. If I like something, I'm definitely going to buy a whole bunch of the shit. It don't matter if it's a pair of shoes, if it's a pair of pants, it's a shirt, some clothes, some food. 
if I really like something, I'm buying a whole heap load of that shit because I really like the shit. So the first pair of those pants I bought was a double XL because you know it's the most Simo brand. It's in the junior section at Target. So I lost 18 pounds in five weeks. Okay, so a bitch needed a smaller size. So I get the extra large. Then I said to myself, April, you like these so fucking much. You best to get yourself another pair. Didn't see them at the one Target. Seen them the other day at the other Target, another pair. But said, you know what, April? Listen, because I was getting ready to buy them, but something told me, well, I told myself not to buy them because that night before, so this was Sunday. Sunday afternoon, we went to Target, and I seen them pants again. Um, Saturday late night, I was on Amazon, and I seen them same fucking pants, okay? Now, mind you, I was on the Target website. They didn't even have them on there at all, okay? So I said, well, Amazon got every fucking thing, and these leggings are good. They ain't no cheaply made leggings with a knees at. They are, they got seaming. They seamed, they, they hemmed up, they got, they got a seam, you know what I'm saying? So they're not opening and rolling. So I look on Amazon, and I put that in. I zoom in to the picture. Sure enough, the knees are made the same way. They got a seam at the knees. They, they good. High-waisted, just like the ones that I got from Target. $14. Just the same exact price as the one at Target. So I was like, oh, shooky dooky now. I'm going to buy these because I couldn't find them on the Target website. And when I just bought the second pair a week prior to that, that was the last pair in that one Target. Oh, I'm going to buy two pair of these. I'm going to buy two pair of these and I'm going to be happy. I'm going to get me a large and an extra large because I already had a double XL and then I got an extra large from Target. So I'm going to get an extra large off of the Amazon website and I'm going to get a large because the bitch probably going to lose some more weight. She going to need them pants to fit. And they are nice, thick material. These are nice, thick leggings. Not thick where your ass going to be sweating and your coochie going to smell. But they thick to where your ass ain't going to be seen. Meaning, you can't see through them and they don't look cheap. I was all happy and excited. You know what I'm saying? And then I seen another pair of leggings. They got laced all up. I had to put the picture in it. Hopefully, I'll remember. Got those two. Those came yesterday, the ones with the lace all up them. The material was not what I expected. It was more or less like some fucking nylon shit. Like, okay, they weren't bad though. Okay, I could wear these. I could do these. I put them on. They fit good. They're not the they're not the material that I expected them to be. Like the ones on a freaking Target website, but they acceptable. I was like, ah, whatever. I can't wait to Tuesday, which is today. I'm gonna get my new leggings. A bitch is excited about some motherfucking leggings. Okay, excited. So, as I'm dropping off my phone to the place, again, your package has been delivered by Amazon. Oh, shit. Can't wait till I get motherfucking home. Because my leggings is going to be there. So, we pull up, get out the car, there goes the little package. It's in like one of those little plastic envelope type things. Now, mind you, I said it was two pair. I look at Tati and I was like, these... This, this don't look like my leggings. She was like, they, they, you didn't even open them yet. I said, well, this only looked like this one pair in there. She said, it's probably they probably rolled up. I said, no, see, the material and the size that I wear, these would be only one pair. This would not equal up to two pair. This little bag looked like it's only one pair in here or the material is not what I've expected. So, I go in the house, I was like, opening up, I was like, these better be right, because I'm already having a bad fucking day about my phone and shit. So, this better be right. I'm all ready, I'm ripping the bag, opening shit. I look, it's wrapped up with this hard-ass plastic. As soon as I look through the plastic, I'm like, oh, hell to the no. These ain't my motherfucking leggings. Now, mind you, they were made the same. However, that large and that extra large looked like they was both the same motherfucking size. And the size that they looked looked like somebody fucking size small for a preteen. And they was cheaply made fucking leggings at that. Some nylon see-through. I put one of my legs through them and it was like, oh, hell to the no. You can see my flesh and everything. Let alone, I couldn't even put the rest of my legs through them. They were so fucking tight. So mad. Now, the holes, where the holes was at, the slit, yeah, it was seamed. It had a seam, but that shit was not what it seemed like. So, I look inside the paper, inside the, the pants. I'm like, where's the fucking size tags at on this shit? Because it says made in China. Where are the, on the back, where are the motherfucking size tags? Because how the fuck do you know that this is a large and an extra large, you motherfuckers? Well, there's no tags 
at all in the pants. They both looked identical in size. They barely fucking stretched, okay? This looked like something that I, I couldn't even give them to Mumsy. I probably may be able, I, I probably can't even give them to my daughter, Nay, who's 15, because she ain't skinny, but she ain't fat neither, but she got a nice little size and shape, and them shits is not going to work for her neither. So here it is, Amazon, you about to give me my motherfucking money back today, and I'm not going to return them, because, um, no. Not as described, not as fucking described. So you mean to tell me you sent me some 10 year olds fucking leggings because that's who the fuck they look like they could fit. That just kind of like fucked up my whole day because I was waiting two days for these fucking leggings to come. Even though I got two pair, had I known that Sunday when I was at fucking Target and I seen those other pair that was a size large and extra large, at the other Target, I would've just bought those. But I said, no, April, you don't need to have five pair. You, don't, you got four, that's enough. So not cool. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. So now it's time to get on to the real talk. So if you guys need a real talk about your life, your situation, what the fuck is going on in your world, you can definitely send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Go ahead and make sure you put in the subject line real talk so that way I know that the shit is definitely about you. Um, let's see here. Um, if you want to change the name of those people that you're talking about, then you can always go ahead and send me, um, you can always change the names. Meaning, if your name is April, but you don't want nobody to know that because you think everybody in the world going to know we talking about your ass, then you could definitely go ahead and say, April, I don't want to head and change the names. If you don't say that, I'm just going to assume automatically that um you didn't change the names so on that note first of all i gotta send a special shout out to my husband with his sexy fine ass um i love you so now we're gonna get into real talk okay <laughs> All right, you guys. Now, I'm. this is not a phone. This is my fucking iPod, all right? This is my iPod. Hi, April. First, I want to say thank you for the videos you share on YouTube. You're a beautiful and real person. I appreciate that. April, I want your opinion on something. I have been married for four years. I will use Trina for my name and William for my husband's name. Well, for the past two years, we have been having problems. And yes, I know marriage is work and we're going to have ups and downs. But it's some things that I'm, I'm just starting to feel different about. I knew he was on child support and that didn't bother me. I have been to his house and I knew it needed some work, so that didn't bother me either. So after about a year, I moved in and I have been married before. He... I have been, and I had, so after about a year, I moved in, and I had been married before he had not so, so I didn't really want to get married so soon. Okay, I had been married before, but he didn't, so I really didn't want to get married so soon, is the way she worded it. But I kind of seemed, but he, but it kind of seemed right. He was a great, he had a great personality and a big heart. So we married each other. What the issues are is that I came into the relationship with a little money. And now I'm broke. I have fibro fibroid oh god, I can never fibroid fibroid myla oh god. This one is a tongue twist and I never can say this. Fibroid myalgia. However you guys say it, you know what I'm talking about. Fibroid myalgia. Okay? I cannot pronounce that for the life. If you was to give me a million dollars, I wouldn't get it. Um I have fibroid my myalgia. Oh god. <laughs> from the mold in the house and some other things. I think it's like a bad form of um, like arthritis. Um, like the place is really ran down. It's just ran down. Like I had never have lived this way. He wants me to wait until it's right to get another place. He doesn't pay child support anymore, thanks to me. And he doesn't owe back taxes, thanks to me. And I'm not bitching about that. I mean, yes, I was pissed when I didn't get my tax money back. But I was trying to help him. My husband, you know, I did what needed to be done at the time. 
Like I stated, it's been four years and I don't know what to do. I have just put up with so much from living around his family to my living conditions at our home. If I put everything in this email, you will never finish reading. I love him, but I'm just not feeling the part that I have to settle for a certain living situation just because I love him. He doesn't pay bills. He gives me like $100 to, to maybe $200 a week so to um, make up for what I spend a week on bills and gas. He doesn't clean up. I mean, I'm just not used to that. I started looking for a place for my son and I until my son goes to college in the spring. I don't know if I need to walk away or grin and bear it. I feel so stuck. It's consuming me. Same. So basically, Trina has been married to William for four years. So when she met him, she knew he had to pay child support. When she met him, she knew that his home was run down. You know what I'm saying? So she was fine with that. Was she fine with it? Or, you know what I'm saying? I guess she dealt with it, basically. She dealt with it. Um, you know what I'm saying? She dealt with it. It didn't bother her. She didn't say it was, it was, she was fine with it. It didn't bother her. The child support didn't bother her. The rundown house didn't bother her. You know what I'm saying? She, you know, because he had a big heart and he was a good person. And now they are married. And she didn't really want to get married because she had already been married. He hadn't. Well, I gotta take, y'all know the medication make my mouth dry. But now it's like enough is enough. He don't have to pay back taxes anymore for that run down shack. He don't have to pay child support anymore because of her. Had to do with her tax money. He don't even pay any bills. She says she pays the bills, but I guess he gives her like between one hundred to two hundred dollars a week just to make up for the money that she spent on all the bills. And um, maybe she just say all the time maybe. Um, he don't clean up after himself. Hmm. Here's the kicker. I ain't about to live with nobody that don't like to clean up after himself. First of all, you ain't nobody's fucking maid. I'm not about to clean up after you. She done caught fibroid myalgia. I know y'all bitches gonna say, girl, that's not how you say it. And I know this. But she done caught. <laughs> I'm really trying to say this. Y'all know what the fuck I'm saying. She done caught fibroid myalgia. Fibroid myalgia from the living conditions, from the mold in the house. Let me tell you something. I think your name is Trina, right? Mm hmm. I'm not about to live in nobody's fucking house where you catch a mold, okay? If you got molds in your house, Trina, that is a horrible living condition. That fucks with your breathing. That fucks with your lungs. You taking in all that nastiness, all that fucking hazardous, toxic fucking shit, fumes, whatever's fucking floating around up in that house, you breathing that shit the fuck in. Let me tell you something. Yeah, you might love him and shit, but are you willing to die? For him, because you're living in, like, the gutter. And I don't mean to call it like the gutter, but the living conditions that you're living in is just not suitable for anybody. When when homes have mold in them, nine times out of ten, they, um, they had mold in them for quite some time. Like, the house that I lived in in New York, before I moved here, my neighbors had to tell me that it had mold in it, okay? Because the landlord was outside painting, paint, painting over it. And then I started seeing it coming through the walls, okay? And this was like when I had been living there for quite some time already. And what I noticed was my daughter's hair started falling out. My hair started falling out. Like, shit, living in a house like that with molds, you're breathing it in through the vents and shit. That shit can fuck with your health so bad that it would be like, it just would really fuck with your health. And I think like for me, my hair falling out and my two little daughters' hair falling out, I think that that home that I lived in had a lot to do with the mold. The reason why our hair fell out like that is I think it had a lot to do with the mold because it just can't be coincidental that everybody's hair started falling out like that. Like my hair got so thin and started falling out like it's never been the same. Um, my daughter's hair, their hair has grown back but mine's has never been the same. And I think it had to do with the mold. Like I've seen the mold coming through the paint over time let me tell you this 
it's one thing when you love somebody and you put up with a whole lot of shit. We, we put up with a lot of shit in a relationship, but you cannot put your life on the line and jeopardize your life for a relationship. Now, if he's fine, if William is fine with living in squalor and living in like third world country, third world country conditions, then let his ass go the fuck on and let him continue to live like that. But you got a son and you're talking about getting you an apartment for you and your son until he goes to college and yourself. So y'all, your son should not even have to live in those conditions because you want to be with this man, okay? You are putting your your child's health in jeopardy because you want to be in a relationship with William. It's bad enough this motherfucker don't clean the fuck up or pay bills, but I'm not about to live in squalor in third world country conditions because this is how you choose to live. Motherfucker, give the house up. There's some things you could put up with, but I'm sorry. I don't like to live in dirtiness. I don't like no nasty ass house. I don't like no fucking dirty ass rooms. I don't like no fucking filth in general. I may be a little bit um not even cluttered because when I, I i don't throw shit on the floor I, that's one thing i don't do i don't throw shit on my floor i don't make a mess in my room only because i hate to fucking clean the shit the fuck up so i'm not gonna make a mess to where i have to clean it up so that's one thing i don't do um the only place that i throw clothes on the floor is in my my in my closet and that's my dirty clothes i have a pile and then i put them in a basket so but throughout my house i don't have a dirty house I get pissed off if I see smudges on like my glass kitchen table or on the coffee table. I, I'm really funny like that, okay? Like I, I can't take too much of a mess. Sometimes a little bit of clutter because we all have a lot of things and sometimes we may not put them away right away or it may be sitting here. Like the desk that's in front of me, you know, my desktop is on it. I have my, my Mac on it. I have my... Uh, my snowball mic on it. I have my iPad on it. I have my other camera on it and I have like other things on it and picture frames But sometimes that gets a little bit of cluttered and it drives me crazy because I'm just I'm the type of person that I have to be really organized. Okay If you look in my closet, I have my clothes color coordinated. All right and my shoes That's how I am because I like to be able to find shit and I just like for me I just feel like being neat and taking care of your shit is meaning that it's going to last much longer. Some people may not have the best of things and I think like that's probably why I'm so like anal about keeping shit and being very organized because I didn't always have the best of stuff, especially as a kid growing up. So when I get new shit or I get anything, I like to hold on to the shit. Like I'm not saying I'm a hoard I'm a clothes hoarder. I have a lot of clothes that I don't even need. Um but I do like to take care of my stuff, but I don't like a mess. Like, I can't stand when people don't clean the fuck up. Like, my kids will tell you, I flips the fuck out. I goes off because there's no motherfucking reason why your house should look like this. Built. And it's one thing when y'all in a relationship and this motherfucker is not cleaning up after himself. But then it's another thing when you, meaning him, are contributing to the filth. Or the squalor that we already live in. So y'all living in like some third... The, the way I'm picturing this shit is this chip paint all over the outside of the house. Molds, okay? You breathing in that shit. Cracks and crevices. The windows don't even hold really good heat. The insulation is not that great. Like, I'm just picturing you in like a third world country. Like, in a, in a, in a house that has been built in like the early 1900s. Because this is the way you describe it is like, who the fuck wants to live somewhere and catch like fibro fibroid myalgia, okay, from living in a home? Like mold is not something that you want to fucking play with, okay, Trina? Listen, I mean, I'm saying four years is not a long time to be married to somebody. Um, she done went into the relationship with a little bit of money and now she don't have none which is fucked up. She said the house is really ran down. Like the house, to me it looks, it sounds like the house is so ran down like it needs to be fucking condemned. And she's saying he wants to wait until it's right to get another place. So when the fuck is it gonna be right? Like, um, what does he think he gonna put that house in the market and somebody's gonna buy it? No nigga, the house is not right now. It's really ran the fuck down. 
You don't have the money and neither does Trina. William and Trina don't have the money to fix this motherfucking house up. That's why it's ran the fuck down. That's why there's motherfucking molds all up in the house. Because nobody has the money to contribute to fix the motherfucking house up. That's why it's ran the fuck down. And he's talking about when it gets when it's right to move out and get another place. Dude, you don't work. You don't pay no bills. I I, I don't know about him working because she didn't say he worked. She just said, I'm not bitching about it. I mean, I was pissed. Um, She was like, he don't pay bills. I'm not feeling him. I love him, but I'm just not feeling the part that I have to settle for a certain living situation. Just because I love him. He doesn't pay bills. He gives me like one to 200, maybe $200 a week to to so-called make up for what I spent a week in bills and gas. So... I don't know if he works or not because he's getting money. So maybe he does work because he's giving her one to two hundred dollars a week. But when the fuck is it gonna be right? When the house fucking um falls in? When the oh when the roof motherfucking falls in? That's when it's gonna be right. Listen, Trina. Okay. Listen. She's not used to a nigga not cleaning the fuck up. For one, the house is run the fuck down. That shit needs to get cleaned the fuck up. You can't make your house look nice inside and clean it the fuck up and do this and that to it when the whole house is like a piece of condemned shit, okay? Let me tell you this much. As much as I love my family members, I've been to their houses plenty of times. And they have offered me to stay over the night. A bitch like me would pay for a room at a hotel way before I sleep in your motherfucking dirty house, okay? Because for one, I'm just really scary about bugs crawling on me and roaches. I don't like them. Yes, I have grown up in the projects, but a bitch do not like roaches. Yes, I know what a motherfucking roach is. And yes, I've had those in my house as a kid growing up. But I don't want them now. So I refuse and I don't want to lay in your house and... I come home with one in my suitcase, okay? So, I'm not a, I'm not going to put myself in a situation that's going to make me feel uncomfortable. On top of that, Trina, you probably don't invite nobody over to your house just because of the conditions. Here's what you need to do. William is being stuck on stupid, and he's being stubborn, and he wants to stay there until shit is right. What you need to do is tell Williams, listen, I love you, William. And I'm happy that we are together and we met one another and we're married. However, this living arrangement, this living situation is not what I expected. I have a child and mold is a toxic, hazardous thing. And I'm not about to risk my life living here any longer. So, William, I would love for you to come with me. We as a family can leave and find an apartment to rent. But this is not good for our health. What you need to do, Trina, is look that shit the fuck up. He already know you got fibromyalgia from it. Why the fuck would he want you and expect you to stay there? Like, that's just being selfish. Now, a part of me is like, he being selfish. And you know what? When people are that selfish towards a person who is so caring and who has helped them, then that means they don't give a fuck about nobody but themselves, okay? He being selfish because if he wasn't being selfish, he would have been told you to get your ass out of that house, him along with you, okay? Now, you done caught fibroid, whatever, and you still subjected to living like that? Who knows what your fucking son has? Why would you subject him to live like that? He could catch asthma. His lungs could get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? That's a health hazard. And let the health department of health find out about that shit. That house would be shut the fuck down real quick. I don't know what state you live in, but in New York... In certain spots in New York, that should have get shut the fuck down. So I'm saying, have a nice talk with him and let him know you love him and it's not good for the, neither one of you. Go to him and let him see that shit on the internet, what Mo could do to you. So that he can make his own mind up. I'm pretty sure you already done did that, but sometimes you got to let a nigga know. Like, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes men can be a little bit hard-headed and stubborn. And you got to come back at them like, listen, dude, listen. What's up? What's good? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to come back at them and let them know what's really good. I'm just saying. Me personally, if it were me, I would have been left. I'm not about to live in nobody's fucking mold infested house. Not happening. So, sweetheart, you need to take you and your son. If he don't want to go, then you know what? Let him stay there. He going to stay there to the roof fall in any fucking way. So, you might as well just go ahead and find you and your son a place and, 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 and get to stepping. 
it doesn't mean that y'all don't have to be married to one another. And I'm pretty sure that he'll see that you're not there. He'll start missing you. And then he'll want to leave as well. Sometimes you got to take that initial step for the next person to follow your lead. And that's just how it be sometimes. So, let Trina know what you guys feel about that shit. Because I know if it was me, um, I'm not staying there. I'm definitely not staying there. Mm-mm. So let's move on to the next one. Hey, Diva April. Love you, girl. The names have been changed. I have a friend that I have known since middle school. We are now in our 40s. I have known her for a very long time, and I thought I honestly knew her pretty damn well. Here's the problem. Almost three years ago, my friend Monica met a man named Frank online. Nothing wrong so far. It was actually on Facebook. He asked to be her friend and she accepted. Mind you, Monica accepts all friend requests. The next day, she awoke to this very long message talking about how happy he was. She accepted his friend request and hoped she was a God-fearing woman and could be a spiritual friend. Fast forward one year later. She finally tells me about Frank. Excuse me, fast forward one year. She finally tells me about Frank and that he lives in Gambia, Africa. I think that's how you say it. So now I'm thinking, scam. Oh, I forgot to add, all her five children are grown and he has a six-year-old and, because she put the and in capitals, he is barely 30. Whatever that means, LOL. Back to the story. Monica is head over heels in love with Frank. She's willing to do anything for him. Like take on a second job to send him the whole check for his family and village. <laughs> By day, she is a school teacher and has limited funds. I thought her second job was to help her pay off some debt, she said. But nope, Frank needs her. Her words, not mine. She decided to go visit Frank in Gambia for her birthday and spent a little over $5,000 to spend three weeks with him in Africa. Mind you, they're in Newton, New Newton, in the area where he lives. I think that's how you say it too. Since Monica's visit, she is more head over heels in love with this man. Okay. So over the last couple of years, she has purchased a well, a well for the village. Yes, girl. She has purchased a well for the village and continues to support him and his child. She has lost all of her friends except me defending this person. So basically, Monica has lost all her friends because she keeps defending Frank. I find him to be crooked. Initially, her Facebook page was wide open. Nothing was private. The whole world could see her post. I have since told her to lock down her page now. So now I look back on some old photos on her Facebook page. She gave him a road map to her heart. She constantly poured out how hurt she was and the kind of man she would give her all to. Duh. He read the memo and knew exactly what to say to her. Fast forward to the present. Frank has, re Frank has received thousands of dollars from her and a lot of empty promises except that he wants to marry her and move to the United States. Duh! Green card and U.S. citizenship. Okay. Given I'm the only one that will entertain any of this foolishness, I'm at a total loss with her. I have her links about con artists they, that say and do anything to get to America. Oh, I have given her links that about con artists that say and do anything to get to America. I sent her links from the TLC show, 90 Day Fiance, and more. After she's asked all of her friends would anyone be willing to sponsor her fiance, yes, she asked the same people that told her he was a con artist to sponsor his ass to come over to the United States. I've asked her, how does he know all the details to get to America unless he has tried this before? When she was determined to travel to meet him by herself, 
I made her give me some contact information for where she would be staying. Find out where the U.S. Embassy was just in case she needed to leave because of God knows what, etc. I retired from the military and I'm always thinking about safety. Know your surroundings and overall being vigilant about where you are and what's around you. She is the polar opposite and takes all these risky chances with her life, her money, and you name it. I have no idea what, I, what else I can do to save her from him and herself. Diva, I really want to knock her out sometimes when she has a new story of stupidity. Any advice, April? Oh, you know what's so crazy? Let me tell y'all. Monica's story, I have read something so similar to this before. And it's so sad because women be so vulnerable and lonely that the first like message that they receive like from any kind of web dating site or whatever online, they just start to fall, fall head over heels in love with these men. And I think it has a lot to do with the post. Just like she said, Monica been on Facebook talking about what type of man she wants and what she would do to get this type of man and what was me, what was me, and how she been hurt and all of this shit she done cried out. This man, Franklin, or Frank, whatever the fuck his name is, Frank, he done read all that shit, okay? He done read all that motherfucking shit and was like, oh, word? Oh, I'm going to be all that and then some for her. Now, let me tell you something. I, I am not a prejudiced person. I'm not a racist person. I don't really give a shit what your race is. But let me tell you this much about Facebook and them Africans. I have gotten so many friend requests from African men on Facebook in the past that some of them I didn't even accept. They just would inbox me. I, I wouldn't even accept any of them, actually. And some of them I actually ended up accepting just because I would just go click, 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 click. And then I had to go click, 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 delete, delete, delete. You're not going to be my friend. But... The ones that have DM'd me that were never accepted, you know, I've had like a couple of them I knew, okay, and I knew them just because they sold hair. So I don't think that was a harmful thing. Those were like contacts, but the ones that I didn't know that were sending me DMs, you know what I'm saying? They would be all over from all parts of Africa. You're so pretty. Oh, I want to get to know you and all of this shit, you know, like, dude, first of all, you live in another part of the motherfucking world. Second of all, I'm really not into to men like you. Third of all, please don't fucking send me no bullshit ass because um, y'all be sending the motherfucking emails talking about, ooh, you are an inheritance of someone in Uganda for $1 million. All you have to do is send 10000 and you'll get your Ugandan money because they don't have no relatives. I already know and I already peep all them fucking scams, okay, that come from all these foreign third world countries or wherever country, okay? for one now she done seen this man like once in her lifetime and they've been dating with each other for all these years she done bought him a motherfucking drinking well i don't know how much that shit costs but i'd be damned if i'm about to buy some nigga a motherfucking well for his village first of all i'm not saying anything is wrong with dating an african but if you live in a motherfucking village all i can see is a bunch of people running the fuck around in a village that isn't very well kept and they living in fucking huts okay and I'm really not up for traveling all the way across the country and spending $5,000 to see a motherfucker when there's dick in the United States, okay? This African, and she's into Africans. There's a lot of Africans out here in the United States that she can have her fucking free will at. And I'm pretty sure that they will treat her just as nice, okay? Especially the ones in America. At least you can see who the fuck they really are. This ain't the Eddie Murphy fucking movie in Arsenio Hall movie, Coming to America, bitch. You are not about to be his fucking queen or princess. It doesn't work like that. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. What you need to do is tell your friend is... Look at this motherfucking video. This is for you. And April is talking to you. Wising the fuck up. Bitch, just because he's in fucking Africa don't mean that he gonna be all it is and then some. He is not Eddie Murphy from fucking coming to America. He ain't no motherfucking prince, okay? He ain't about to throw rose petals at your motherfucking feet and have a bunch of women carrying baskets behind you talking about, oh, she is a queen. Oh, she is a queen. Oh, she is a motherfucking queen. That ain't about to fucking happen. What the fuck is going to be happening is you're going to be getting taken and took and gotten for every fucking thing you have and you ain't going to be left with nothing. Let me tell you this much. Them days of marrying men who ain't got no motherfucking citizenship shit is over and done with, okay? 
It don't work like that. It costs a lot to come to America, and you got to have sponsors. And I'm sorry, but I'm not about to marry no illegal immigrant. That's one thing I would never fucking do, okay? If your ass is not from the United States, motherfucker, then you don't have a chance with April. And you ain't got a chance with April anyway, because she already taken. However, if I wasn't, I would never fuck around with somebody in a foreign country, okay? Here is the thing. He met you. He met you on Facebook and you accepted his friend request. Then the next motherfucking morning, he gave you a whole story time story about how he is so lucky and feels blessed and happy that he met you through Facebook and hopes you're a God-fearing woman. These are the things that men say to women when they feel that they're vulnerable and they think that this is what the fuck we want to hear. This is the dumb shit that I be saying to y'all females. Open your motherfucking eyes and listen to the shit because these motherfuckers is trifling and they will have you in a motherfucking trap house selling your booty and everything else for them, okay, to get what the fuck they want. Tell your friend to open her motherfucking eyes up, okay? This motherfucker is not even her age. Her kids are grown. What y'all motherfuckers need to do, since you know her five kids are grown, what you need to do is, honey, you need to call up her kids and y'all all need to get together, go over to her motherfucking house, and have an intervention with this bitch. And with other friends that you can pull together, you need to have an intervention with this bitch. And when you have the intervention with this bitch, please play this motherfucking video and let her know that I said to wisen the fuck up, okay? She is in her 40s, which means she should know the fuck better. I know the fuck better, okay? I know the fuck better. These dating websites are full of non-foolish fucking non-purpose men, okay? You buying wells and shit for a motherfucker in Africa. Like, I mean, I'm saying, me personally, if I met somebody online and they didn't live in the United States, a nigga, I'm not going to visit you. I'm not leaving out of the United States to go travel my ass across country to some foreign country and not be able to come the fuck back. That's the first fear I have. Like, hold the fuck up. How am I supposed to get back? What if this happens? She brave. She brave as a motherfucker because I'm sorry. I'm not about to go to nobody's country and save a motherfucking African. Okay? And now you're going around asking your friends will they sponsor him? So they're going to put themselves in jeopardy for some motherfucking con artists. You didn't even mention that he didn't, he, he didn't do anything for her. You didn't mention he did this for her. He did that for her. All he did was give her some African dick when she came to Africa. So what, is she saving himself for her? While he meanwhile over there fucking rubbing up on every other woman in the village and hut? But well, let's get for real. Let's be for real about this. Like, for real, uh, some real shit, what you need to do is have her and her kids and you, y'all need to all get together and your other friends, y'all need to get the fuck together and have an intervention with her. Because she's lonely, I get that. And now she's holding on to every little word that he says. All of his high hopes about, oh, when I come over to America, we are gonna be this and we are gonna do that and we are gonna do this. Let me tell you something. I, I, I just think that it's unattractive for a man that don't have shit, okay? Let alone an, a man that you have to bring over from another country and teach him everything. Like, I'm not into teaching and giving so much. That's just one thing I'm not into. Like, I give my heart and I give whatever I can, but I'm not about to give you everything that I fucking got. And I damn sure ain't about to buy you no motherfucking well for your village. Like, what the fuck? I mean, let's, on some real shit? No. It's time for an intervention, okay? It's time for a motherfucking intervention on some real shit. It's time for intervention. You, I could totally feel you like you want to knock her the fuck out. Because if that was my friend, I would probably cuss her ass out so fucking bad that she wouldn't know what the fuck hit her. Like on some real shit. Like I have this friend now. She ain't got no man from Africa. But, um, and it's not my bestie. But she got a man who she don't even want to be bothered with. And I have already given her my advice. And I've already told her how to deal with it. And I've already told her what to do. Now you got to do the shit. Either, either, you're either going to do it or not. But the one thing that you're not going to do is you're not going to constantly keep fucking whining and crying to me about the nigga. Because I don't want to hear this shit no more. I've already told you from jump what the fuck to do. However, sometimes you got to let a bitch learn their lesson. But this is a big ass lesson to learn from Monica. And honestly, she's being taken for everything she has. There are good men here in the United States. This is not coming to fucking America on some real shit. This ain't coming to fuck America, all right? You need to sit her down. You need to have everybody, her friends and her family, her kids, have an intervention. I know if that was me, my kids would go the fuck off on me if I met some man in Africa. Also, real shit, 
I would hear all kind of shit from them. Not curse words, but they would be they would try, they would be bringing me to my fucking senses. That's what the fuck they would be doing. Okay, they would be bringing me to my senses. Like I get it. At, at forty, sometimes it's hard to find love. We might have been through some shit already. We might feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? She been through some shit. I get it. And then we become vulnerable. And then the first person that says something nice to us. Oh, I'm in love with him. He's Mr. Right. I get it. I fucking get it. Who hasn't been there and done that? All right. I fucking get it. All right. I get it. Why do you think I had the devil living with me for like a couple of months? Because he said some nice shit. And then after two weeks, I was done and tired of him. Like, okay, he got to go. Because I get tired of motherfucker real quick. And not even tired of them, but if you ain't a certain person, like my husband, then I don't really want to be bothered with you like that. So it wasn't even that I didn't want to be bothered with him. I just didn't want to be with him. I didn't want to be bothered with him. I wasn't even trying to give him a chance. But, however, the whole situation started with, you said some nice things to me, and because I was lonely and bored, I gave in. And that's the same thing that's going on with Monica. And it's unfortunate that that motherfucker is all the way in another country. And she buying wells and shit. What the fuck's next? She gonna be buying huts and houses and shit. Like, move to, she gonna move to Africa next? You know what I'm saying? Like, listen. All Monica is, is a meal ticket to America. Okay? That's all. That's all she is, is a meal ticket to America. And you need to have an intervention with her because if you continuously allow her to continuously do this with her dumb, elaborate story, she's just going to keep going. She's just going to keep going. So, in my opinion, it'd be time for intervention. And I wouldn't necessarily give up on her because some people just, some people just be so lonely that they don't, they don't understand. They just want to be loved. And everybody wants to be loved. Who don't want to be loved? Everybody wants to be loved, but it's the way that we go about it. And it's unfortunate that her kids are not saying anything to her. And I'm pretty sure that they know about this because it's been going on for a couple years now. So I'm pretty sure that they are very well aware of the fact that Monica got herself a man in fucking Africa and um, Gambia, Africa. And she's traveling across the country to visit his ass. And she's having wells and shit fucking sent there and built the fuck there and giving out water and shit like that. Like... She just helping the whole motherfucking village out. Next thing, she going to be helping the country out. Like, on some real shit. I mean, it's good that you're giving her advice and that you're showing her links to con artists and shit. But, you know what? Some people, some women are always like, well, it's not me. That's not him. That's not him. Honey, that's his ass. He's scamming you to the utmost. He got a kid. So, he got a kid and he's under 30. So, what are you, sugar mama now? You are, you a sugar mama. To a guy that's under 30 and got a kid. How much you want to bet Frank is over there banging out every motherfucking African woman he can get his hands on. Including his baby mama. He probably got more than one kid that you just don't motherfucking know about. Tell her to watch this video. I'm pretty sure she'll get it then. Hopefully she will. But before you tell her to watch the video, get the intervention together. Call up all your friends and her, her kids. We're going to go over to Monica's house tonight. You know what I'm saying? Bring some food and some shit. Not no drinks. Bring some food. And bring some positivity. Sit down. Let her know what's going on. Turn this motherfucking video on that I'm talking to you from. And let her know, look, bitch, this shit is real. That shit happens to people all the time. Come on, man. They got scams. They got African scams in fucking Zimbabwe and shit. Wherever these countries are at. Fucking email. That shit, I don't get the emails anymore, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you females have gotten these emails where, like I said, you are you are an inheritance of somebody. The first time I got one, I was like, what? Then I kept getting them. I was like, first of all, um, I don't have no relatives in Africa, okay? My light-skinned ass don't have no African relatives. They Italians, all right? Now y'all fucked up. Y'all fucking up. Y'all motherfuckers fucking up. And so you're going to tell me that I got over a million dollars of inheritance money and you want me to come get it. But y'all, you could have just used it for your, your dirt poor country. Instead, you want me to come get it. Like, okay. Oh, uh, 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 okay. Right. So l let her let her know about these, these scams and shit. Huh. I don't know, you guys. I think it's just called vulnerability. Vulnerability. Coming to motherfucking America.
I'm sorry. So this is the last one for the day because I had to go get my daughter. Hi, April. My name is Blank, but you can call me Chanel. Okay, so me and my daughter's father, we'll call him Brian. We have been doing this on and off again thing over 20 years. It took us a long time, but we look at each other's family as our own. So if we were to ever give it a real shot and it don't work out, a lot can go wrong. We have tried having a real relationship back in 2010 after I told him I was working on getting a divorce from my current ex-husband. Sad to say that relationship didn't last too long because he ended up doing a bid for like five years. Mind you, I was there for him throughout the whole ride, but he felt it would have been selfish of him to ask me to stay in the relationship with him, not being there for me and my five children. Damn, everybody got five kids? Because I do too. Fast forward to him getting released in 2015. I found I found I find out that he hooked up with one of his exes while he was locked up and they rekindled their relationship when he got home. Cool, no biggie to me. I went on with my life until they broke up and he came back to me saying he thinks he's ready to try again. I guess being that it was around our daughter's graduation, he felt those old feelings coming back for me. That lasted a good three months until he started dating someone else. Mind you, still coming to me whenever he needed help or advice. He got into with the, he got into it with this new chick and gets locked up again for eight months. This time, I told him I was not sending him any money or coming to visit and to contact your daughter directly if you want to see how she's doing. So August of 2017 rolls around and he gets released. He pops up and my mom goes off on him, telling him how he messed up a good thing and he's saying, "I know. I had a lot of time to think about what has happened between us." So we start talking again around mid-September of this year and everything is good. Talking about what he has learned over the years with his past relationships and sorry for how much hurt he has caused and he misses our family. Even talking about marriage. Meanwhile, he's talking about getting married and the marriage between us has to work because we keep coming back together and he says he needs at least two years before we can get married. We get engaged on his birthday and all of a sudden he wants to get married right away. He's going around telling everybody we're married, introducing me with his last name. And I'm like, cool, okay, whatever. Then we have a conversation this past Saturday about when we were actually going to go to the courthouse because I didn't want a wedding. Then he drops the bomb that he needs at least six months to a year before we can get married because he wants to be more stable. Okay, I can understand where he's coming from to an extent. But then on the other hand, why pump me up and then let me down like that? So needless to say... I stormed off because I felt some type of way about the conversation. April, I have a very good job, so money is not an issue. My thing is, a lot can change or not. Much can change in six months to a year. Since he's been out, I have been holding out in the bedroom because I don't want things to get more complicated than they are. And this man is my weakness. So, you know, I'm struggling right now. I love this man more than I think more than I think he even knows. We have had so many deaths in our family over the last year, let alone all the killings that have been taking place in, in the world. And I just want to be able to marry the man that I love, if anything, in my, the man that I love, if it is my time to go. Am I wrong in the way that I'm thinking? Should I let it go and give him what he's asking? I just want to be able to wake up to the only man that I have ever loved and to call him my husband. Sorry it's long, but I had a lot on my chest and I don't want to walk away from the one thing that I have dreamed of since we had our daughter, being a family. And besides, you know how hard it is to write a short real talk giving you all the details, LOL. Thank you. I love your channel and your family. Kind of reminds me of me and my five children, Keisha. Okay. Did she? Anyway. But she signed her real name at the bottom. Okay. So, Chanel. Chanel got five kids, and I, I guess one of them is with this guy, Brian. So, basically, they've been doing this on and off thing for the past 20 years. He want to be with her, then he, he start dating somebody else. Let me tell you something. We can't always keep giving in to these men because we love them so much. Sometimes we got to love ourselves just as much, okay? And when we love them more than they love us or we love them more than we love our own selves, that's when things start to get out of hand, shit start to get fucked up, people's feelings start to get hurt, people don't see things one thing, see things one way or the other. And let me tell you, if you guys are living together now, that's great. And like you said, a lot can change and a lot may not change in six months. Now, y'all been together for all of this time so far. What is six months going to make a difference? So he needs to be more stable. For what? You know what I'm saying? For what? 
Y'all not going to go to the chapel and get married. Y'all going to go and get married at, you know, the courthouse. And y'all going to continue on as if y'all were the day before y'all were married. So I don't really see what the big deal is about waiting six months for him. Meaning I'm on your side, girlfriend. I'm on your side. Because he keeps putting off. And a part of me is feeling like he's just saying, give me two years. Then give me six months because he's trying to string you along. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he just trying to tell you these things because the for the moment it's good? And then when somebody else comes along, then he's just going to, you know, hop off with them? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it's starting to make me feel like. From just reading this and reading from what you wrote prior, I'm just feeling like he's just trying to string you along. And he's been doing that because he's left you for somebody else. He's rekindled a relationship with an ex while he was in jail. Then he got with somebody else. And then he got with somebody else. Like, it's not fair to you. Why should you be the one sitting around waiting on him all the time? He ain't waiting on you. You know what I'm saying? So now you got back out of jail after doing eight months for some bitch that you shouldn't even been involved with when you should have been with, you know, Chanel. And now he want to come crawling back to you because what? Now you see that the grass is greener on my side of the fence? Like, that's not right to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really feel like in my heart of hearts, like, is he trying to string you along until something else comes along? Or is he stringing you the fuck along because there is already somebody? You know what I'm saying? I hate to feel that way about any man. Hold on, guys, because my... Like, a part of me feels like he's just playing mind games with you because... Here it is. We've been together for 20 years. We've been doing this back and forth shit. Like, what's the fucking problem? Why can't we get married today? You know, if you, you know something, sometimes when we storm off, it doesn't resolve anything. Like, I understand everybody wants to be stable in a relationship. What makes you think, like, in six months from now, do you're going to be more stable than you were six months ago? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to catch up on a lot. You have to catch up on your motherfucking life. You've been locked the fuck up. I think it's going to take you longer than six months. Are you trying to just say we marry for the time being because it's good it's all good on this side like I, I'm, I'm just not understanding that shit like a part of me feels like there's somebody else like that's honestly how I feel and like honestly Chanel stop wasting your time on somebody that doesn't really love you like that now I'm not saying he doesn't and I'm pretty sure that he does have feelings for you and I'm pretty sure that he does love you however here's the thing we don't get any younger as the days go by and it's sad to say that life is short and we don't really want to waste it on somebody that's not worth it. And the best way that you can figure out this, that he's worth it, is to sit down and talk with him. And I always say this to you guys because if you're avoiding it and you're not saying anything about it, you're not really going to get to the point. And the same shit that you said to me about what's going to make a difference in six months or and, and so forth and so forth. First of all, y'all are still going to be paying the same fucking bills. Y'all are still going to be together. So why does it matter if we wait six months? You already calling me your wife. I need to know what your true agendas are. Like, sometimes we have to sit down. We have to look a person in the eye and ask them, what's your real intentions? What's your real agenda? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm really feeling like it's it's really not to be with me. And I'm really feeling like right now, it's not to marry me at all. Like, this is what I'm feeling about you. And I need to rectify the situation. And I need to know what's going on. Because you got me feeling one type of way when it's not even really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm feeling like you letting me down. And I'm trying to give you my all. And this is how I feel about you. And this is what I want to be with you. But if you can't give me that, I would expect you to be honest and be a man and be real and be and tell me the truth. This is sometimes how you have to kind of people. Instead of coming at dude, oh, rah, 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 yelling and arguing and stopping off. Sometimes you got to come at them and be real and be humble and be just like, you know what I'm saying? Have a conversation with them. That's not saying they're going to give you 100%, but at least you could look them in the eye and you can get some type of feeling and knowledge from it. I mean, but to me, like marriage... Like, in all honesty, I really wish that I would never got divorced. So, that's how I feel about it. Like, I wish I would never got divorced. I love my husband to death. And I would give anything to marry him again. And, and we've talked about that a lot. But we've already married each other. So, we know what we want. However, with you and him, it's a different scenario. And I don't like the fact that he leaves you for one person to be with another person. And, you know what I'm saying, you be with everything be all good for like three months. And then he just hot tail leaves. Like, who the fuck does that? 
Let me tell you something. Sometimes we got to play hard to get and we got to lay down the ground rules because if we don't, niggas, bitches are going to walk all over us and they're going to take our kindness for motherfucking weakness or our vulnerability for a motherfucking weakness and then that's going to leave us fucked up, okay? That's why a lot of times I don't play that shit. I just don't play that shit no more. I don't get in my feelings and I, I mean, but when I was in other relationships that wasn't with my husband, I don't get in my feelings. Like when I was with that dude, I don't I didn't get in my feelings because for what? You weren't worth my feelings. I'm not giving my feelings to somebody because I've already been hurt and I've already went through shit. However, we have to lay down the rules and let niggas know or bitches know, listen, this house is about to be. You ain't about to walk all over me. If you want to leave, then bye, Felicia. You know what I'm saying? Don't let a nigga keep constantly leaving you because if you do, that's what the fuck he going to do. I understand you want to be with him and you want to be you know, in a relationship with him. You want to marry him. That's what you want. But that might not necessarily be what he wants. You understand? Know so what you need to do is figure that shit out and have a talk with him. Instead of having your heart fucking ripped out of your chest every few months. Because that shit ain't cool to you. So on that note, you guys, I got to go get mumsy. I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Leave your comments below and I'll see y'all in a soon to come video.